She, or S-H-E-E, stands for Self-Deployable Habitat for Extreme Environments. It's the first European space habitat simulator able to prepare and train a two-person crew for lunar or Martian surface exploration. It's a deployable test bed and the first of its kind ever to be built. It's been developed by seven partners, uh, ISU being one, but also we're working with Liquifer uh, Systems Group, Space Application Services, COMEX, SPIN, Sobriety and the University of Tartu from Estonia. It has been constructed to be a rigid deployable structure, which means that it can be compacted for transportation. It can easily be transported with a lorry and it has the size of a standard Euro container. It can double its volume through the process of deployment. The prototype that you see here is supposed to work as a test bed uh, for astronauts on Earth. The difference between other simulators and she uh, is that uh, our habitat is uh, merging requirements and design drivers of a variety of environments in one platform. So it's much more complex simulator than uh, anything uh, that is currently being available, uh, let's say, on the research market or simulation market. She design fills a very uh, specific niche. So it is an analog simulator. It is not designed to go to space. It's not designed to go to the moon or Mars. What it is designed for is for us to be able to perform tests in a similar situation or a similar environment here on Earth in a much more controlled atmosphere. She provides integrated research on a human spaceflight operations that include living, working, and social life, external EVA operations, uh, interaction with the uh, confined environment, uh, interaction with external uh, robotics, for example, uh, and any sort of uh, interaction you can imagine uh, regarding the human system integration. ISU has two roles, two primary roles in that uh, project. One, it takes care of the project management, so it provides the framework for all the partners to work together. And the second is that it does operational testing on the built habitat. So in this role, we'll be taking the habitat and performing tests, functional tests and usage tests inside the habitat. Liquifer was mainly concerned with the design development of the exterior hull as well as of the interior furnishing. That is, for example, the beds for the crew quarters, the workstation for two people, and um, we also chose the materials for the interior. The inner volume has space for a crew of two who can live and work in the habitat autonomously for up to two weeks. One crew quarter for each crew member acts as both a retreat and sleeping compartment. There's also storage space for personal belongings. Another compartment is designated for research and other work activities. A communal space with a galley and foldable dining table is located in the center. This area serves as the corridor between the other sections. The wet compartment houses a hygiene cabin which can be closed off from the working zone using a translucent folding wall. The working zone also provides a workbench and the main storage space. The main challenge of the design was to pack all the elements as compact as possible. Ideally, in compact mode it would be no free space and in deployed mode it's a completely functional space for the astronaut. To make the working zone operable after the shell is deployed, a number of simple steps allow the habitat to flexibly unfold its many uses. After the safety belts are released, the movable parts can be easily pulled out and attached. Each item is described in the SHE deployment manual along with its handling. Here, a shelf is being deployed. Using minimal space, this section provides sufficient room for two people. The beds inside the crew quarters are easy to set up 
creating compact sleeping compartments. The walls are covered with textiles of different color combinations to create a comfortable and cozy sleeping and recreation area. A special display generates different lighting atmospheres for relaxation phases. The hygiene cabin, which contains a washing facility and toilet, can be closed off by pulling out a folding, translucent wall. COMEX was involved in the development of the uh, life support system. Uh, this is mainly based on our experience from submarine developments. We used some of these technologies to be integrated into the habitat in order to make people live in autonomy for two, two weeks there. Partners at the University of Tartu in Estonia manufactured the shell of the habitat and engineered the actuation mechanism for the deployment process. To make that unpacking and packing of house, you need to have a lot of automation, a lot of pumps, a lot of motors. So you have to program the controller. You have a lot of sensors. If there's some failure, you have to check it out and make it in a way that it's not dangerous to house or people inside, outside. The task of Space Application Services was to prepare and analyze the habitat in a number of ways by carrying out structural computations and conducting human factors analyses. The first one uh, was the, some finite element analysis to be sure that the structure uh, can support uh, the weight of the furniture and the crew. Um, we also participate in the human factor analysis to highlight the critical part of the she habitat and we also contribute in the virtual reality application to train people beforehand uh, to know the she before being really inside. Sobriety conducted computer simulations so that air circulation and thermal issues could be studied under the diverse climatic conditions of Earth, the Moon and Mars. So basically we take the 3D model of the habitat uh, improve it to numerical model that is able to, to compute, put it into surroundings, uh, find the boundary conditions and scope the reactions between these surroundings and find a way how it reacts with the wind, with sun and all these events. She can withstand extreme conditions wherever you put it on Earth. It can be Arctica with negative 85 degrees Celsius with no sun or even dead volley with 60 degrees of Celsius and no wind and direct sunlight. We need this system, this SHE system, in order to determine which aspects of this design or which aspects of this uh, architecture, uh, which requirements, uh, uh, which technical uh, capabilities or components are the right to be put in the actual prototype for Moon, Mars, Antarctica, desert or post-disaster. Uh, situations. We can imagine that it could become an emergency medical unit and uh, it could be used in remote locations such as the Antarctic as research stations for example. 